making my coffee this morning. Hey, it's Casey Coe Corbin. I say hey because I live in South Georgia, even though I grew up north. Um, I'm a Yankee transplant. I remember how silly that sounded when people said hey to me. I always wanted to say straw back to them or alfalfa or, or something equivalent. But anyway, back to uh, this epiphany. Um, you know when you are a pouring addict when you have obsessive and compulsive behaviors. So I was up way too late painting, pouring last night, and this morning I was awoken by an epiphany and I had to get up early, not getting nearly as much um, sleep. I could have slept for another two hours before I needed to get up because um, I just had this idea and the idea was further fostered by by my, my cappuccino. Um, and so, um, which is going down now. Mm. So good. Um, caffeine addict as well. But I had this idea about um, creating a reservoir of the, the white paint, because we're always trying to get white on top of our colors and then literally injecting the colors. Now, if, you are, if you've never seen these, these are very inexpensive. Um, I get them on wish.com. They're called needle nose squeeze bottles. And I really don't know what they're originally for. I think that they're for either e-cigarettes or tattoo, but I don't do either one of those things. So I don't really know, but it's a, it's a, it's a neat little bottle. Um, sometimes this thing gets on my nerves, but it keeps the cap on there. But when you're filling it and stuff, it becomes bothersome, but you just put a little bit in. I have no idea what goes in there. Half ounce, maybe not very much. And then, um, uh, squeeze it in. You got to hold this thing back. And my idea here is I'm going to fill this with white and then I'm going to inject color and try to squeeze it out and see what kind of things happen. And then when I pull this ring off and start tilting, what kind of action we get there. So uh, you're with me as I experiment on this. I have no idea what's gonna happen, if it's gonna work or not. I've uh, really enjoyed these. And they're all, these these are also great to have on hand for touch-ups. So if you have a piece that's dried, and you're like, oh man, I could use just a, a, one more drop of uh, metallic purple. Um, you, you know, typically whatever color I'm going to use uh, in, a, in a major way in a piece, I'm going to make myself up one of these little bottles here. And, I, and like on wish.com, I think I get them for 10 for a dollar. You got to shop around and a dollar shipping. So for two bucks, I get um, 10 of them. So uh, 20 cents a piece. They're, they're awesome. Um, and uh, so these are just the colors that I can use with this piece if I want to. And this one is a mix, and it's become so mixed that it's uh, mostly muddy now. So I might use that for a background. And you also can put other things in it too. Like this is dimethicone, so I can just kind of drop it in if I feel like I need to. So, but I won't be using that today. So I got a little bit of gold here, which I will lean towards. And um, I might even just try out the idea of um, typically I try to avoid mixing my warms and my cool colors because it can get muddy but I think I'll go ahead and try them all just to see what can happen and, um, and I was thinking about creating a, a, a mix inside the same container so um, maybe I'll do that let's see what color this is one thing I, I typically do before I do uh, art is I'll create a little color palette of everything that I'm going to use and so um, this is this is pretty gray stuff right here. And by pretty, I mean it is really gray, not that it's pretty necessarily to look at. So I may or may not use much of that. Well, let me just show you how this can work. All right. I don't have a, a red over here. So this is actually a metallic red that I have in my condiment container and so I can uh, just unscrew this I can hear several of you screaming no don't do it um, as even through the YouTube or Facebook I mix up all my stuff in advance if you've seen any of my videos you know my ratios 
and they stay good and workable for literally months. So I'm going to try putting this red in here. All right. And we'll see what we end up with here. This, like I said, is the tricky part. I did a pretty good job of not getting paint all over the place, which is hooray for me. I usually do. I usually make a mess. And we'll just screw that on. All right. So we'll see what happens with that. So my idea here is, and I have been playing around with some white. This is our, our typical white. It says, uh, um, Flow acrylic paint from Artist Loft, and it has um, Floetrol, and it has um, water, and it has no um, additives. I don't use any of my additives to create cells in either my white or black, so they stay neutral, and then I just put those in the colors. This, however, is something that I've been playing with, and some of this is, idea has been inspired, <clears throat> excuse me, by... Um, um, Golly, I've just dropped his name. Uh, Mr. Burton talking about using uh, just house paint and water and then down with water, no additives, nothing. So actually this is pretty close to this. I, when I, I, made, I made up a big old, this is an old container that I, obviously old, that has a, a squirt lid. And so I was throwing out the stuff that was in it and I was like, don't throw away that container. Um, that'll be good for that. And so this is just half um, house paint, interior house paint. And it's even just a base. It's a it's a, um, a tintable base that doesn't have any tint in it. And um, uh, regular. Um, so I'm just going to do a little use this as an opportunity to do a little side by side comparison. So I'm going to create. Well, you can really see a color difference in there too. About a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit longer. Well, I mean, a little bit deeper. And you could use this as just a ring off of. Um, it goes on one of those uh, mixer things that you can just mix a single uh, shake in. What do they call those things? It'll come to me in a second. That I never use. Um, so I decided I would, I would waste it. But I think you could use a mason jar ring. Um, and probably the best thing would be a cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter for that. So I'm going to keep my... I don't really want to get white inside of these. So I'm going to start with just a basic here and a blue. I've already given these some tilts and some shakes, so I'm going to make sure that I don't have any air in there. And then I'm going to wipe off my needle. So um, I'm using a subway tile here. I thought that that would be advantageous because I was considering doing it on a canvas, and I saw that there were some dips in the canvas just because you know how canvases are, you know, especially the, the cheaper ones. So I'm going to I'm going to start in here, and then squeeze out. Good. And I'm hoping that I didn't just suck some white in there. And I'm going to just wipe off my, make sure you can see that, yeah, wipe off my needle. You keep those clean and keep it good. These things are great. I just refill them. I don't even clean them out. And yeah, because red, I'm sorry, blue and yellow look so cool together, I might even try to blend them underneath here so I've got uh, hopefully all the paint down at the bottom and I'm going to do a very similar pattern that I did the first time okay hoping that I did not suck any blue in there I think I should experiment is there any blue in there I think there is a little bit okay that first drop was a little green okay maybe I clean that out and you put these little All right, so let's let's go to our mix now. Oh, no, I'm, I think I'm starting to see some of it come up. I didn't really expect much of that to happen until we um, uh, lifted the ring up. But let's see what we got going on here. And I'm just going to try to put it down and squeeze it down in a pattern. Yeah, we can see some of the 
white is sinking as we know it has a higher uh, gravity density and so it's going down and I've, I see that I'm getting some more leakage on this side and I'm, I was wondering if I should create a puddle on the outside just to create a, a seal but I am getting I hope you can see that without anything else just some really neat color coming up I'm going to continue to add color just because this is going to be an experiment and see what we got so probably exhaust most of my gold and you, you got to use your imagination since you can't really see maybe it'd be a good idea to squirt out a little drop just in case I sucked any back in there when I let go this is getting a lot fuller I think you're not putting too much paint in with these little things here, but uh, evidently you are. All right. Now I've got quite a bit. <laughs> well, I might get some good skins out of this, and so I can put them in my cabochons and put them in pendant trays and. Do something with that now see i haven't even lifted it up yet and look at the, some really cool designs that i'm getting there so maybe we'll go this is a metallic orange here yeah i sucked in quite a bit with that one I need to take my time a little bit more And I will finish with black. I like using black in almost everything. It seems to have a grounding effect. Maybe we'll do something different with the black because I have been pushing the needle down and squirting it against the floor of the tile. Um, but I think maybe this time I'm going to try to suspend it and see what happens. And again, sucked in too soon, I think. Hard to tell with the black. All right, now the now the moment when we lift off of this thing. Let's see what happens. And that is what I was hoping for. Some cool individualized cells. I prefer linear lines, either up or down or side to side as opposed to zigzags. So frequently when I'm doing this kind of patterning, I will go from one side to another before I start angling towards the corners and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't Ooh. now I don't know if you can see that but that is super cool right there If you're new to this, I'm adding some paint that I know is going to go off the sides just to be able to get some, get it to go off the edges there. Now that is amazing. Look at that. That's awesome. I'm going to do that another time here. Not really wanting to keep that mess, but it breaks the water tension. There, it's something to help me is there such a thing as a paint tension? Because I don't know. Fluid dynamics, I guess. And surprisingly, I am running out of movement on this thing. I thought we had tons of paint on here. Then again, most of it is on the table. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to get this last corner. And if it doesn't move, I'm not really too worried about it. I'll squirt some extra white right there. In fact, I think I'll do that anyway. 
You always got to think, it's sometimes really easy to get fixated on trying to get to that corner and you don't pay attention to what you might be losing somewhere. And so you got to be careful of that. Kind of keep your, your eye on the whole picture here. With uh, some white in different places, you end up with a negative space which I think, I, I find that more artistic. I, th I think it's more like, okay, this is this is art now. Um, sometimes whenever I get done coating a tile or a piece real well, I end up with something that looks like a, uh, a piece of tile that you could get from a manufactured thing like you could get from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm like, that's not what I'm trying to go for here. <laughs> I'm trying to make art. Uh, but... All right, I'm going to pause it right there because I do like that corner. All right. So um, I'm pretty excited about the turnout um, with this. I think it's pretty neat looking. And I'm happy with what I have so far. It's a little bit more colorful than I normally use um, or end up with. I don't normally do a whole lot of uh, uh, different colors. But I am digging, like, you know, we did not use any green, but this whole big patch of green here where I, I believe that I squirted the blue and then the yellow right on top of the blue. I'm digging this right here, which I think is uh, surfacing now. And I could torch this if I want to and see what happens, which I probably will just for experiment purposes. And so since I've decided to do that, let me go ahead and do that with you watching. I'm breaking my what I said I was gonna do which is I wasn't gonna torch inside the house anymore because I don't really like the fumes but I'll just do it real quick and it won't count there you go all right let me get my torch But I'm too tempted. I just gotta see. Since this whole thing is about layering effects. I will see what happens to the other layers. Good enough, though. All right. Well, thanks for inspiring this cappuccino. You, uh, you've been a good friend to me today. And uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me.